Okay, so one form of cell division which we need to be aware of is called mitosis. So let's take a look at mitosis. So essentially, we've drawn here the cell and particularly we've zoomed into the nucleus here. Okay, so this is your nucleus. And the idea is in the nucleus, we can see the chromosomes. So we've got two different colors because these are the chromosomes from the father. Remember, we have pairs of chromosomes because we have one member from each pair coming from a father or the mother. Okay. So you can see the, you've got two longer chromosomes, one from the father, one from the mother, two shorter ones, one from the father, one from the mother. So this is your normal cell before any cell division occurs. So what happens with mitosis is essentially we want to create two new cells. So we need to replicate the genetic material. So the next stage of this, basically, if we just take the nucleus, what happens is, is we actually double the number of chromosomes. So in the beginning, we had chromosome like this and it, it forms a pair. So this is replicated and the same thing on here is replicated. And exact same thing for the cells, for the chromosomes that came from the other parent. So they kind of switch sides, but it doesn't really matter. In fact, we'll just, to keep it consistent, we'll switch the sides. Okay, so don't want to confuse anyone. So now you can see they form these kind of X shapes. So this is what it looks like. Essentially, you have, you have the chromosomes from the mother and the chromosomes from the father and all of the chromosomes essentially have a duplicated to form copies of themselves okay so here we can see just to label one of them this would be your original and this would be your copy what happens next then is the membrane of the nucleus disappears so you just have free floating chromosomes and the chromosomes essentially line themselves up in the middle of the cell so we'd have the smaller ones like that and the larger ones like that and the same thing happening here chromosomes just arrange themselves in the middle of the cell and then essentially that the originals are pulled to one side of the cell and the copies are pulled to the other side of the cell so these are all the originals being pulled to one side and these are all the copies being pulled to the other side so you can see it's one from each of our x shapes are being pulled in opposite directions okay so this side you have original and this side you have copy but the point is at this stage essentially you've doubled the genetic material and essentially you've created enough genetic material for two different cells to be created so the nucleus itself now has actually divided because you pulled each of these chromosome pairs to one side of the cell and so now what your cell can do if you draw the wider cell again your cell can basically split it into two different what we call daughter cells okay because remember now you've got the genetic material just as you started with it will look something like this and the exact same thing on the other side okay so if you remember at the beginning we started off with our cell looking like this we had two pairs and the exact same thing we've got two pairs again okay and at this stage then the cell can divide so you get cell division over here what happens is the cytoplasm and the cell membrane essentially pinch together and divide into two and you end up with two identical daughter cells okay so now you've got two cells here with their nucleus the nucleus then can reform and as usual you have all your genetic material that you start off with so i'll just draw one pair because it's small essentially all of the the dna the chromosomes are pulled to either side now goes into these nuclear nuclei of the two new daughter cells so that essentially is mitosis but obviously we know that mitosis is not always occurring and so actually we have for the wider cell cycle so the cell cycle basically refers to the what happens to a cell during its lifetime and as the name suggests it kind of goes in the, it goes in this cycle so before mitosis occurs we actually have to have this phase called interphase and so we do need to know what interphase is essentially interphase is the stage before mitosis and in order to prepare for mitosis the cell basically represents replicates a lot of its uh, organelles and material. So a lot of the subcellular structures are replicated. So you increase the number of subcellular structures and the cell is basically in a phase of growth. Okay, so that's interphase. So that's in order to prepare the cell for mitosis. So the next phase you might have guessed is actually mitosis itself. And we've kind of gone through what mitosis is, but this is basically the cell replication phase. And we've just seen how that works. And then the last stage after mitosis, essentially, once you have your two daughter cells and the cell actually splits, that's called cytokinesis. So that final stage is basically where the cell is splitting. When the membrane and the cytoplasm pinch in and split, that's what we call cytokinesis. Okay, and then uh, once you've done that, then you've got your two fully formed daughter cells with a new nuclei being formed, and then it goes back into a the interphase stage. Okay, and then you can see it goes in that cycle like that. Okay, so that is the, the cell cycle. We need to be aware of all the phases in the cell cycle, and we also need to be aware of a general look of how mitosis works. So let's do a few questions to have a go and recap. Okay, so a quick quiz then. Feel free to pause the video, have it go, and come back to go through the answers. So question one, name three stages of the cell cycle. So the three stages of the cell cycle we should be aware are going to be interphase, mitosis, which is the stage of cell splitting or reproduction. And the final stage is cytokinesis, where the cell fully splits into two. Number two then, what happens to the number of ribosomes in a cell during interphase? 
Well, we should know the cell structures basically increase. Um, we increase the number of cell structures in the cell, and so the number of ribosomes increases. Okay, and the last question then, uh, the maximum number of chromosomes in a human cell during mitosis is 23, 46, or 92. Well, remember, generally we talk about chromosomes in pairs. So in a normal human cell, when it's not undergoing mitosis, and let's say it's an interphase or cytokinesis, there'd be 23 pairs or 46 individual chromosomes. However, we know during mitosis, the chromosomes all replicate and are doubled. So the number of chromosomes is doubled from 46 to 92 individual chromosomes or 46 pairs. Okay, but in individual chromosomes, it's 92. Okay, so hopefully everyone got those correct. And I will see you guys in the next one.